Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Music Theory Tuition series where I work with you step by step through the ABRSM Discovering Music Theory grades. I'll work through every single exercise and explain everything you need to know. You can access information about the books I have available to help you on my website. Go to SharonBill.com. For advert free and longer lessons, you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sharon Bill. If you can give me a like, that would be super. And please do subscribe to my channel to stay updated. You can support this channel by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Sharon Bill. Let's turn now to page 44 in the Grade 4 Discovering Music Theory workbook, continuing with the topic of intervals. And here we can see that we've got lots and lots of different intervals now. We've gone from minor to major and then we've extended by semitone again to augmented. And we've got diminished as well, where we've got smaller and smaller after the minor and the perfect and we could count all of these individual semitones however I do feel that this is such a lot of random numbers to remember my brain doesn't work terribly well in just rem remembering abstract numbers and also it doesn't help to make sense of what you're doing because remember a C to a D of any sort is a second a C to an E of any sort, C, D, E, one, two, three, is a third. And yet C to D sharp and C to E flat is the same number of semitones. C to D sharp, but we're replacing the D by raising it. Or C to E flat, but we're replacing the E by lowering it. Although it's the same number of semitones apart, and harmonically it sounds the same, it's a very different interval because we're replacing and representing different notes. So I don't think this gives us the whole story. If you are conversant with your key signatures and if you've got them written down in your circle of fifths, you don't even have to worry about remembering them. Just get used to writing them out quickly and it's all there for you. And then we can easily adjust by raising or lowering. So by all means, do refer to this if it helps you, but just be careful and do make sure that you understand exactly what's going on in the harmonies. I do appreciate it. It's quite a tricky topic. Don't worry, we'll get lots of practice and there'll be more practice again later. And it really is just practice makes perfect. And don't be afraid to learn by your mistakes. You know, always use pencil and then you can just erase it out and have another go. And so here in exercise six, we're asked to create, sorry, we're asked to name these intervals that they've given for us here. And so the first job is just, just get the number. So this is a one, two, three, four. The only way we can go wrong is if we forget to count this given low note as number one. Remember, it's like the steps of the scale. We count the lowest note as the tonic, one, two, three, four. So we know that it's a fourth of some sort and we know that G to C is perfect and then we've raised it by adding a sharp and so it becomes bigger. We've augmented that perfect interval and so it becomes an augmented fourth. So here we have a G to an A which is a second one, two, it's a second of some sort. Now we know that G to A natural is a full step, that's a major interval, that's a major second. But then if we raise it again, we've made that major second bigger, we've augmented it. And if you remember, we have this little chart when a major interval is increased by a semitone, it becomes augmented. We've just made that major interval bigger and so it's augmented. And then here, this does seem like a tricky one to begin with. First job, let's get the number. So it's a, a G to an E, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a sixth of some sort, that's half the job done. And we know G, A, B, C, D, E, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you've counted G as one, of course it's G sharp. Now, 
this is quite a hard note to start from thinking what's G sharp major what's G sharp minor and now we have actually covered G sharp minor however there's an easier way if we start we know that G to E is a major sixth and so parallel movement G sharp to E sharp is also a major sixth so it's the same distance we've just parallel moved it up a semitone if both notes have moved it's a parallel movement it just helps to show it more clearly G to E is major, G sharp to E is major. However, we know that in G sharp minor, E is part of the minor scale, but then it could be raised in the melodic minor version, making that major interval. So G sharp to E natural is part of the minor scale, and then it's raised in the melodic minor version. So either way, we now know it's a major sixth. Now here, G anything to a anything is a second. Now we know that G to A, a full tone, is a major second. However, if we've raised the lower note up, we've made the interval smaller to a semitone, that's a minor second, isn't it? And G sharp to A is part of that. We can see, we can see there. G sharp to A, we've made the major interval smaller. You could also think, well, G sharp to A sharp would be major, but we've made the A smaller. It's A natural. You could come at it either way. We've just gone a semitone, and so we know it's a minor second. So perhaps if you feel that you can, do jump in and have a go at this next few. I do suggest that you do that because... Um, you know, it's so much better even if you learn by your mistakes. So let's work through these together now. This is a one, two, three, fourth of some sort. D, E, F, G. Now we know that D to G is a perfect fourth, but the lower note has been raised, it's been made smaller. And so we've made it diminished, haven't we? We could also think, well, D sharp to G sharp is a perfect fourth, but it's not G sharp at the top, it's G natural, and so we've made it smaller. You can come at it either way, you've made it smaller one way or the other, and so we know from perfect, made smaller becomes diminished. Now, regardless of the order, we count from the lowest note up. This is a one, two, three, four, five. It's a fifth. This is A flat. Don't forget, I'm in the bass clef. So we know that A flat to E flat is a perfect fifth. Think about your scale of A flat major, B flat, E flats, A flat, D flats. However, it's not an E flat, it's an E natural. So we've actually made it bigger. We're not on the E flat, we're on the E natural. So a perfect fifth made bigger is augmented. So what do we have here? Well, we have here an E, G, F, E to B flat. That's a one, two, three, four, five. That's a fifth of some sort. Now we know that in both the major and the minor key signature, E to B natural is appropriate. So E to B is a perfect fifth. Remember, we don't have major minor fifths. So uh, E to B is perfect. And then if we just drop that down a semitone, we can see that we've made the interval small. We've diminished the interval from the E to the B flat. And so instead of perfect, we've made it a diminished fifth. There we go. Now here we have an E to an F of some sort. It's a second of some sort. Now we know that E to F sharp is major. That's our full tone. However, it's F double sharp. So actually it's an augmented. We've gone from minor, which is a semitone, major to augmented. It's an augmented second which is not at all the same as a minor third, which is G flat. 
Remember, it's a different interval because it's representing the F note regardless of the number of semitones that you've counted. And so, if you haven't done some already, I do strongly recommend that you try this last row. Even if you get some wrong, that's okay. If you, even if you get them all wrong, that's okay. This is the time to make your mistakes. Better to make mistakes now and learn from them rather than uh, just copying and then not being clear and not having thoroughly worked through it to come exam time. So I'm hoping that you've been brave and had a go. I know it's tricky. So let's check these through together. This is a CBA to a D sharp. That's a one, two, three. It's a fourth of some sort. Now we know that A to D is a perfect fourth. And then we've raised that D and so that becomes augmented. Now here we have a C, D, E flat to, uh, let's count this, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D flat. That's a seventh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the leading note from this tonic. Now we know that E flat major has, oh well, let's put that, hold on, I'm getting carried away. That's a seventh. Now we know that E flat major has a key signature of B flats, E flats and A flats. So D flat isn't part of that, D natural would be major and so the fact that we've come to the flat makes it lower, that makes it a minus seventh. And then here we have a C, B, A, G. Remember we always count from the lowest note Next door note up is an A that is raised with a sharp. Now G to A is a full tone, that's a major second, and then we raise it again to the A sharp, and that makes it an augmented second. And then finally we have here so that's, that note here is a C, B, A, G, F, E, D flat to a C, B, A. Now then we know that D to A is perfect. D flat to A flat is perfect, isn't it? That's a perfect fifth. However, it's not A flat, it's A natural. It's been made bigger, hasn't it? So that's an augmented fifth. I do realise that's tricky but practice makes perfect however that's exercise six now finished. I hope this is helpful to your studies please do like and subscribe to stay updated. If you'd like to support this channel you can buy me a coffee and for advert free lessons you can become a patron. Do visit my website where you'll find many resources available to help you. Visit SharonBill.com Thanks for watching. Bye.